Thank you very much for, for coming along. This is um, so our, our half hour at the beginning of this session is we're both from University of Edinburgh. I'm Melissa Height and I'm director of IT at the university and you and this are Wikimedia in residence. And um, I realized that in the program, the title said the value of a Wikimedian and it really, sh I guess, should have said the value of a Wikimedian in residence because I'm not making any claims about the value of all Wikimedians individually at all. But in the context in which I work, um, uh, within the University of Edinburgh, I had to make the case for funding the role of a Wikimedian in residence. And there's been a number of discussions already in the conference about what the role of a Wikimedian in residence is, and whether there's a set job description or a set kind of thing they might, they might do. And I think that from the position that I'm in, what I would encourage you to think about is that when, when we make the case for a salary, a paid role, there will be someone in the institution who's having to make a case against a budget line. And depending on what the priorities for spend in that area are, the ways in which we show that the, a Wikimedian would bring value to that activity might be different. So depending on whether it's the chief librarian or whether it's somebody in museums and collections or whether it's somebody in another part of the university. So I'm actually um, the director of IT. So um, I had to make the, the case for, for Ewan's role because it seemed to me that there was definitely work that we should be paying for that was going to bring value to our organization and also that, um, that we should, we should um, pay a salary for that. So when, so often colleagues from other universities, other UK universities said to me, well, we would love to have a Wikimedia, and your, your one seems to be doing good work, uh, but we can't afford one, we can't make a case for one. Um, what I always say to them is that you can't afford not to, because in terms of what's going on in UK higher education at the moment, um, the Wikimedians, uh, Wikimedian in residence is really very much in line uh, with what we want to do. And that's particularly in, in a couple of areas. One is that um, universities in the UK are always being told that we must invest in digital skills. And I'm director of IT and I have responsibility for IT training. So making sure that all the staff and the students have the digital skills to work and study um, the best they possibly can. So I have a large IT training operation. Um, the other is that um, gender inequality in science and technology is a real thing. So as well as We've, I think we've discussed at the conference about the gender equality on Wikipedia. Um, in the workplace of academia, and particularly in science and technology disciplines, there is a, a, a gender bias. And so the institutions are uh, very much charged, very, it's a very real issue for us to not only celebrate role models, but to have visible women in senior roles and to, to show that that's, that's something that we value. And the, the third reason is why you need a full-time paid person in your organization is because um, Wikimedia and the many projects change so fast. The tools are new, new exciting things happen. It's actually a, a full-time job to translate for the university that range of, of, of activity. We, don't, um, we can't keep up. It's changing so fast. So actually having somebody do that translation role to build the bridge between Wikimedia, Wikimedia UK, as it happens in the UK, but a specific university is a full-time job to translate that. So University of Edinburgh, this is a picture, it's a, one of those old ones, um, it's very ancient. It's um, the sixth oldest university in the English-speaking world. Um, there were more universities in Scotland um, than in England for a while. There was Oxford and Cambridge in England, there was four in Scotland and Edinburgh, so um, the, the fourth one of those. And it's the first of the UK institutions to be founded not by the church, not on a monastic um, uh, tradition. It actually was founded by the citizens of the city. It's a civic, the first civic university. It was actually called the Toons College, the, the university, the, the college for the people of the town. Um, and so it has at its very heart this idea that it is open um, and uh, it's a, an institution that is, 
had in its mission statements about open knowledge and sharing and making education available to all. So we have uh, um, had Wikimedian in residence now for is it 18 months, nearly two years, um, and we've had a range of activity that Ewan is going is is to talk about. Um, in terms of previous residencies in the UK, there had been Wikimedians in residence, but they had been in libraries. Um, and the Wikimedian residence at the University of Edinburgh is not in the University Library, though we do have libraries and collections and museums and lots of lovely things. Um, but um, Ewan's role is in, so it's within IT, but it's with that specific um, angle in terms of staff and students. It's more aligned with um, educational technology. So the, the role is situated alongside IT trainers and, and learning technologists, instructional designers, all of those ed tech people. And that's particularly because we want to get as many staff and students um, to have the skill, the digital skill of knowing about how to edit, how to add, understanding how information gets onto the internet, how, who puts it there, how it stays there, how it's contested, um, where it's from, um, all of that sort of information literacy, digital literacy. Um, so there's a lot of um, emphasis in the UK to try to get universities to show how they are doing this. And the issue about making a, the link to making a budget request, making a case, is that if an institution is being charged to show how, how is this university supporting this agenda, then being able to point to the kind of activities that Wikimedia in residence might do helps to unlock funding um, for those, those posts. And the other place that you can unlock funding within UK higher education at the moment is in um, uh, gender equality. So all of the institutions are being asked to show, again, commitment, um, to show activities towards the achievement of the Venus Swan Award, which is about women in, in science and engineering. So there are groups of people, there is a budget line within an institution that is about showing how the university is meeting um, that, uh, that agenda. And again, I've managed to align the activities that, that Ewan is doing um, in his residency against the kind of key performance indicators that we're being asked for, for a Venus Swan. So Ewan has been particularly targeting the involvement of um, female students and staff in coming along to the editor funds um, and ha has been quite successful in managing to attract and um, sustain uh, that engagement. Um, and I think that the reason that this is going working quite well in the institution is that the sort of structural inequalities about why women do or don't study um, the sciences or stay in the sciences at, at the university are actually some of the same structural issues in terms of barriers and community um, environments, whether that's toxic or supportive, whether you can see um, role models. Uh, very much the same discussions we're having within the universities um, that seem to reflect um, on some of the reasons why perhaps people aren't particip women aren't participating um, at the same levels. In, area, in certain areas of technology. And I think it, it's also very situated in the academic sphere because the same sorts of discussions about citable references and who gets published and who has traditionally been published and so what the body of work you can call upon. So an article um, perhaps about an area of science, uh, perhaps a woman in science, does that then draw upon sources that are published uh, from women, other women scientists, so you've kind of got a vector test of, of science publishing um, uh, that isn't, the network it, um, isn't that strong. And just finally to return to that um, idea that institutions are large and complex, Wikimedia is large and complex, and there is a certain amount of, it's I think easier to get individuals to engage with doing something with Wikimedia. You do it yourselves, you do it off your own back, you uh, bring your own understandings to it. If you're trying to move an institution, which in theory is 30,000 um, staff and students, um, towards sort of group activities or activities that go into the curriculum that are assessed at higher education level, there's a sort of set of 
frameworks and support that is needed for larger groups, um, which I think we, we've had to work on where it's perhaps a lot of the guides and support that exists was, was for individuals who might want to engage socially. Um, engaging groups has been a, a translation task. Um, so in terms of getting more Wikimedians into UK universities, I'm, as I say, regularly approached by people at other institutions asking how to make the case and think that it's um, quite important to think about what the priorities for the institution are and how those can align with what a Wikimedian in residence might help us to do. And that we need to sometimes, I think now it's time to move the Wikimedians out of the libraries and into the more mainstream activities um, in the university of teaching and learning um, and IT skills. So Ewan is going to talk about the work that he's been doing at Edinburgh specifically in those areas. So, hello, uh, my name's Ewan. I work as the Wikimedia in Residence at the University of Edinburgh. Um, as Melissa said, it's a post that started in January 2016 on a part-time basis, and it was then extended in January 2017 for a further year on a full-time basis. Um, if you want to know what happened in the first year, uh, we have a nice snazzy infographic at tinyurl.com forward slash wiki residency. And the title for my portion of this is Lo and Behold Reveries of a Connected Campus. And I called it this for several reasons. One, because I like the film of the similar sounding name. Secondly, because I like Werner Herzog. Thirdly, perhaps because my first year could have had the subtitle A Year of Chaos, Hostility and Murder. Happily, the reverse was true. Uh, and fourthly, because I believe that the residency has all been about making connections, getting people within the university um, to see how their work relates to the work going on in the Wikimedia projects. And gradually through quality interactions, uh, having building up a network of nodes. That, so if we have a quality interaction with one or two people, they start bringing in other people and eventually, the hope is that that then goes exponential or viral, as was recently uh, mentioned to me. So, uh, my, my role uh, has three uh, areas of remit, to raise awareness of Wikipedia and its sister projects, to design and deliver digital skills events, uh, such as edathons, both inside and outside the curriculum, and to work with colleagues all across the institution in, in what we, on whichever project makes most sense to them, and just to see how the university can most benefit from and contribute to the Wikimedia projects. And I've, there's an article about the residency as well that you can, where I've summarized it all at tinyurl.com forward slash edinwiki. Um, so as a new resource, uh, I was kind of dependent on people engaging with this new resource. I could have spent the year twiddling my thumbs if no one had engaged with me, but thankfully I wasn't treated as a snake oil salesman. Um, with a university with 36,000 students and 13,000 staff, there are enough people that get the importance of sharing open knowledge and the relationship with the Wikimedia project that I've never been busier. Um, so, uh, and there is also a correlation in that the skills that the University of Edinburgh are seeking, as Melissa mentioned, are the very skills that uh, Wikimedia projects help deliver on. Delivering a critical information literacy, digital skills, critical thinking, research skills, online, citizens, online citizenship and collaboration among lots of other skills. So we're on vogue. Um, because as the conversation is about how you engender students with this critical information literacy to combat things like fake news, 
Wikipedians have, of course, been combating fake news for years. And in terms of developing research skills, a Wikipedia project um, in the run-up to a dissertation project is something that a lot of lecturers are responding to, and it's finding that they, it resonates with them. And as Melissa said, there is this shared mission where we are we recognize that we're both the university and Wikimedia are about the creation, curation, and dissemination of knowledge. And there is no greater avenue of doing that than working with the Wikimedia projects. So that's where I sit. But if I was working completely on my own, then it might not have worked as well. But happily, I do have support. I have Melissa and her deputy, Anne-Marie, Anne -Marie as um, giving us high level strategic guidance and all the um, resources we, we, we ask for, hopefully. Um, doesn't always happen. <laughs> but um, we also have an open education team that I work with in um, Lorna, Charlie, and Stuart. I work with on a regular day to day bus business basis, even. I also work with Gavin, our digital curator, and with academic support librarians. So it's a team effort. No man is an island, no Wikimedian is an island. And we also have the Wikimedia UK team, some of whom are here, Lucy and John, uh, who offer a great deal of support and advice and guidance. Um, we also have the course leaders that we've worked with as well, who also are very enthusiastic and their support brings in other course leaders as well. And of course we have other Wikimedians in residence at. Um, in the UK that we ask for advice and share resources between and we're going a lot better in supporting one another and share so so that we're not constantly reinventing the wheel every time there is a residency we're building from the last one uh, in terms of factors that have helped the residency I think the visual editor has made people stand up and take a lot of notice and some of the responses we've had uh, once we get people in the room is that it's super easy, fun, really intuitive, and addictive as hell. So that helps. If you're getting people to have a go at Wikipedia editing, you want them to have a good experience. Um, but you have to get them in the room to start with. So we run events often at times when academics can attend, during February term breaks, during summer term breaks, um, and we've run 18 Wikipedia editathons where people from different disciplines can come and experience the editathon environment, get question me about and challenge me about Wikipedia's relevance in academic circles, and I can combat any sort of preconceptions they may have, and they go away with a more informed understanding. But like I say, you have to get them in the room start with. So the editathon's been a good model for us and we've run a number. Spy Week with Women in Red. I think Rosie's here as well somewhere. I'm not sure what. Anyway. So the main thing you wanted to get people to get from this, uh, from engaging with the Wikimedia projects, is that knowledge is alive and best you, when it's used, engaged with, built upon, expanded on, and that knowledge when kept in silos of any kind, be they Wikimedia projects or university repositories or paywalled uh, journals, are missing a trick when they can be much more than the sum of their parts uh, when they're interlinked and shared uh, with the world and delivering uh, discovery. For instance, our digital curator, Gavin Wilshaw, has digitized um, a number of uh, PhD theses that have been added to Wikisource and in turn linked to Wikipedia. And now we're going to add uh, Wikidata information about those theses as well. And because we've done it with one, he's now wanting to expand that work to another 20 to 30. So it, these things grow. So if you can get someone to have a go once, they will hopefully come back for more. You're planting the seed of how they can best work with the Wikimedia projects. And then sometime down the line, you get a, an email or a phone call and say, can we work together? But you need to reframe the debate. A lot of lecturers um, still think that Wikipedia 
uh, should not be cited. And it, really, Wikipedia thinks that as well. So the thing that resonates with them is don't cite Wikipedia, write Wikipedia. The other thing that resonates is that you think of Wikipedia as a digital gateway to academic research. So you link, uh, you don't cite Wikipedia pages, it's a tertiary source after all, but the references at the bottom of the page are where you can click through and check the, the quality of those references and you can cite those. And that resonates with colleagues across uh, the university. And in terms of resonating, uh, we've run three Wikipedia classroom assignments in the first year uh, in reproductive biology, uh, fourth year honours students, World Christianity Masters course, and the Translation Studies Masters course. And we did video uh, interviews with staff and students alike and got positive feedback on all three courses. So they're all three of those are continuing into year two. And we're now augmenting those with other courses in digital sociology and anthropology as well. And we've written these up as case studies that we'll be happy to share. Um, I've delivered 60 training sessions, 946 attendees, 226 staff trained, 192 students trained, and some of the courses have been for course credit, and many lecturers look at their existing practice and ways in which they can improve that existing practice by swapping out elements. There was an oral presentation that was worth 5% of their grade on this course, and the lecturer wasn't happy with it, so he was quite happy to swap it out with a Wikipedia literature review assignment. So if you present it as something that's not additional to already time poor academics for them to learn, but a way in which they can improve their practice by swapping out something on their course that they're not completely happy with, they're much more likely to engage. For instance, the reproductive biology course is, in that, is going to be going into its third iteration in September. Um, and we're now thinking of how it can be run as a summative summatively assessed course, uh, where we run it week one, where they research the articles and the academic support librarians introduce them into the different types of databases they should use for researching these articles. And in the second session, we put the articles together. And one of our students, Anya Kavanagh, on that course, created this article on high-grade serous carcinoma which is one of the most common and most deadly forms of ovarian cancer. And it didn't have an article on Wikipedia until September last year. And it's now being viewed something like 14,000 times since September, adding an important source of health information for the global health uh, open knowledge community to make use of. Uh, and she even developed her own openly licensed diagrams so, because she couldn't find any. Uh, translation students are getting much needed published translation practice ahead of what going into the field of work by translating 4,000 words from one language Wikipedia into another language Wikipedia using Wikipedia's new content translation tool. And the positive feedback has meant that that course was run in semester one and semester two. Uh, and in semester two, they reversed the language direction, so it wasn't just English Wikipedia pouring into other language Wikipedias, it really was a two-way <laughs> knowledge exchange. So, uh, key learning points. Uh, sharing good practice both within the university and across Edinburgh and between Wikipedians and residents has been crucially important. Creating a variety of stimulating events where practitioners from different disciplines can participate in open knowledge community has proved to be a successful approach. We've hopefully demonstrated uh, through the case studies that we've done in year one that Wikipedia and its sister projects offer a great deal to higher education and can be successfully integrated in the learning and teaching within the curriculum. But the problem is there is a chasm you do need to demystify Wikipedia. And if you run series of presentations, workshops, and create scaffolded resources, um, we now have 184 videos and video tutorials on our um, version of YouTube at the university, which anyone can use, they're Creative Commons licensed. 
Um, but once you make it easier for people to engage, they will engage. And once they understand the point of working with Wikimedia and make connections, which they have done, then you, it's mutually beneficial for all. And in terms of sharing, uh, working collaboratively, we've also run conferences. Uh, we held a Celtic Not Celtic and Indigenous Language Wikipedia conference in July of this year, where we had 53 attendees turn, turn up. And, but it wasn't just closed for the Wikipedia community. We wanted academics and people working to support those language communities to all come together in the same space and discuss the issue. So we're hoping that that will continue for years to come. And these are my final, I don't know how I'm doing for time actually, five minutes left. These are my final sort of 10 minute, uh, 10 reasons why universities should work with Wikimedia. Uh, mostly what I've mentioned earlier, visual enter, super easy. Uh, anyone can edit Wikipedia. This is often a charge leveled against working with Wikipedia, but making colleagues across the university understand that they, there are checks and balances and it's not the wild, wild west of 2001. Uh, Wikidata offers huge potential to universities and the University of Edinburgh has now got three, well, how much? There are, there is 300 million pounds being ploughed into Edinburgh and the southeast region of Scotland to develop uh, 100,000 young people to understand data literacy and data skills. And the university now sees this as part of a way of making uh, Edinburgh University a hub of data science and the data capital of Europe. So Wikidata offers huge possibilities. So Wikisite, Wikisource, content translation is already mentioned, gender gap as Melissa's already mentioned, but this developing of information literacy, digital skills and research skills, this resonates with colleagues at universities right now, so it's a conversation worth having. Um, I think I will stop there, but I think the main thing I wanted to get across is the positive reactions of colleagues Together across the university. We collect all the material that we've collected and produce um, within a three hour session a uh, completely new Wikipedia page. I think the sense of achievement that the students um, found in, in being able to do this uh, was very evident on their faces as they saw the Wikipedia page for the first time. Contributing to public knowledge in some way, even if it's just repackaging the knowledge that's already there, but you're making it accessible. And it's a really good exercise in critical thinking, and that's something that, um, you know, some of the ultimate skill they learn in an undergrad degree. Um, and I suppose looking at it, uh, learning to look at an article and think, how could this be improved? Um, and I think, and then finally, like, as a student, it's a really good opportunity and it's a really motivating thing to be able to do to relay the knowledge you've learned from lectures and exams. It hasn't really been relevant outside of lectures and exams, but to see how it's relevant to the real world and to see how you can contribute and use your use your knowledge to contribute. Um, I think what I found surprising was how easy it was. Like the visual editor was really good. I thought I'd have to do a little bit of HTML coding or something. Um, but it was really easy uh, to just put it in and do references and stuff. Um, yeah, and I suppose the other thing was how like satisfying it was when it was done. Like I thought, you know, for comparing again to academic essays, like you send them off, you get the grade back, you look at the feedback, and you really never read them again. Whereas um, I suppose knowing that people are coming back to this article and finding it useful uh, is really like gratifying. And you're just, yeah. <laughs> so that's my take-home message. So if you, it works. And we want more um, them to be more Wikimedians and residents residents at other universities. So that's it. Thank you. We got one minute for, for questions. No, not so much, but a couple. Of yeah. Um. Uh, Mike. No mic. Uh, well, I think you're doing a great job. 
Um, I just wondered about the academ academic staff that you taught. Have you taught them to be contributors themselves or to be teaching Wikipedia editing? A bit of both. Um, one of the course lecturers on the World Christianity Masters course is, is a Wikipedian, of, for, and he has been for the last 10 years. That obviously helps. Um, but Chris Harlow, who is on that video there, he's the lecturer in reproductive biology. We taught him how to edit, and he got the bug. And we're now looking to uh, develop him to be able to train others, because we want this to be sustainable. So we've developed a lesson plan. Um, so yeah, a mixture of both. Um, sorry, it's not so much a question as a comment. Um, I'm a Wikipedian in residence at a university in America, and I am in the library, and I sometimes feel like I don't have access to the rest of the university. I'm in a part-time position that I don't know if I have room for growth, so this is really inspiring for me to see that there's a way to be a part of the larger university community. So thank you. <laughs> no, thank you. <laughs> I think we have the time. Okay, okay, yeah. So we head on to the next session. Thank you.